I, I, I know some of you, from what you have said and from your hesitation to maybe go and, and do something the Lord would have for you to do is, is, is some doubts about where you stand with your relationship with the Lord. And that troubles me greatly. For one, you, you can enjoy yourself. And I know some of you have been in that uh, condition for a long, long time. Number two, you can't properly serve the Lord if, if you're constantly doubting where you stand with Him. You can't have the confidence and put your faith in God for things in your life if you're not sure you know where you stand. He doesn't want you in that condition at all. He wants his children to know where they're at. He wants his children to have that confidence of knowing that whatever comes, that we have a home in heaven. He doesn't want those doubts and fears to creep in our lives. I hope that I can bring some clarity this morning to you. And it is my prayer that that would be the case, that the Lord would reveal those things to you, that He would let you know without any doubt whatsoever where you stand, because this is the most important thing that a person could ever address in their whole life. If you, if you haven't been saved, then you need to know it, because you need to be about seeking the Lord. And if you have been saved, you also need to know it that you may serve the Lord and begin to produce fruit. Now, uh, I would like to read uh, two verses uh, of Scripture, and I I'm going to address each one of these verses, uh, and hopefully we can, we can uh, help you through uh, through the Word of God. And I believe this is what the Lord put on my heart. And uh, he, he gave it to me uh, yesterday afternoon. I would like to read in uh, John 6 and 44. It says that no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And then I'd like to take a verse from Romans 8 and 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, I want to talk about to draw or be drawn uh, versus to lead or be led. Now, the first verse was, uh, no man can come to me except the Father which is in heaven, draw him. And it says that they that are led of the Spirit of God are the children of God. Now, uh, let, let's look at the drawing and let's look at uh, the leading. They are both the workings of the Holy Spirit, no, no, no doubt about that. But to me, they are not synonymous. They are... Uh, not altogether interchangeable, and I've heard them uh, uh, placed interchangeably, uh, but uh, they don't come from the same Greek word, and, and they don't mean the same thing. Now, I want to take up draw first. It's used twice uh, uh, concerning uh, men being drawn to God. Uh, we can find the one that I just read, we can find uh, John 12 and 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, the Greek word for draw in both of these uh, instances is helko, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, H-E-L-K-O. Uh, the uh, definition of the original Greek is to draw or drag 
or to draw by an inward power. Now, the other places that I, that I saw uh, uh, found this word used in the original Greek, uh, it was always uh, when you were trying to bring two things together. Uh, most of the time it was used when it was talking about drawing water. Uh, and the instances that we can find in the New Testament where uh, water was being drawn, uh, water was way down there, the person drawing it was way up here. Uh, and the drawing was to bring the water uh, back to the place uh, that brings the two together. Now, it says, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. What that means is, as we've talked this week, you're not, uh, you don't have fellowship with the Lord. You're at variance with Him. Uh, and, and what you are doing is, uh, you're, you're, you're going your own way. And if you're hearing lost, that's what you're doing. Uh, you're going out in another direction. You don't have fellowship with God. God is not with you in that respect. Uh, and the scriptures teach that unless God draws you back to him, the father to the son, that uh, you would just keep right on going. You wouldn't, you wouldn't look back. You, you, you'd go after things of the world with, with both hands and, and you'd be running with both feet. You'd just go consume the world and everything in it that you could possibly grab hold of. But when a person uh, uh, becomes lost and they realize that, that is the drawing power of God. Now, uh, it also says uh, that in John uh, 16, when the Spirit uh, is come, it will reprove the world of sin. Now, while this drawing is uh, taking effect, uh, reprove means to uh, convert. It means to refute, to expose, to find fault with, to chasten. That's the conviction that a lost person uh, feels when God begins to draw them. Now, uh, that is part of the drawing experience. You understand that. If you're lost, if you've ever been lost and, and never even saved, you understand what I'm talking about. That, that condemnation... Uh, I felt that for two years and it grew worse and worse till it just, to me, was unbearable. Till it was just so overwhelming and so consuming that I had to do something about it. It was so, if I can use the word, invasive in my life. It had overtaken my life and I, I couldn't function as I normally functioned in my life because of God drawing me, because of the conviction, uh, the cause that God was chasing me, exposing me of my sins, all of this was taking place as he was drawing me in unto him. And the closer I got to the Lord, the light of the gospel and, and the light of Jesus Christ, the, the more exposed I was of my sins, the more that I realized and saw that I was lost and undone. And there was no a pleasure that I could find. There was no peace whatsoever. I was just miserable in my condition. And surely you can relate to that as well if you have been saved, gone through that process uh, by the grace of God. Now, uh, we find here by the drawing that uh, God must initiate the action. I do believe that. That God, uh, say that you've been a lasso. Let, let's get a picture of that for just a minute. Uh, like drawing water. That you've been lassoed. Uh, and God begins to draw you in unto him. And I know that man has free will and I know that he can resist. But, but the drawing to me got so, uh, got so strong and uh, so uh, difficult to bear. That, that I began to, uh, to run to him and uh, the, the, the farther I would run to him, 
the more that he would pull and, 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 and I found salvation. But if, if you're lost and, and you say, well, where's the Lord at? That's the drawing that, that lets you know where the Lord's at. And, and you, you go towards that uh, as you feel that drawing and all of that, that condemnation is going on uh, and all of that trouble within you. So uh, the drawing process, uh, it's not a, a pleasurable experience. Okay, uh, so uh, let's go turn over to uh, Romans uh, for just a minute. Uh, and I want to look about the word led. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, led uh, is a Greek word, A-G-O, a go. To lead, take with one. To lead by accompanying, attached to one's self, an attendant walking together. Now, that's altogether different than being drawn. Uh, it is talking about an attendant or attached to oneself that would indicate that that is two people that are walking together, that begin their walk together. Now, what my feeling is that we are drawn to his breast, then with him led by his spirit. When we are drawn to him and we, we make it uh, to the Lord and uh, he uh, takes up his abode in our heart and, and we realize that we are one of his children, uh, that he says, I'll be with you all the way even unto the end of the world. He says, I'll walk with you. I'll be with you. How can he do that? Because he is already with us. That is like a shepherd leading his sheep. What did I mention the other night in John 10? That the shepherd knows his sheep. And, and I thought that was so amazing when I read about that shepherd. And most of you heard what I said, but those of you that are here this morning didn't. I have that uh, one uh, shepherd, true shepherd of today, uh, ask him if he counted his sheep every night before that he took them into the sheepfold, a place of safety. He says, no, I can just sense when one of them are gone. He says, uh, you can blindfold me and, and take my hands and place them up, up on any sheep in my flock and just by feeling their faces, I can tell you which one it is. And I know every one of them by name. That's what Jesus said in uh, John, uh, the 10th chapter. And the other uh, example was, and I, I thought that was precious also indeed, uh, one of them had 52 uh, mother uh, lamb, uh, mother sheep or ewes and, and, and pretty much all of them had babies they would get them all in there and sometimes it would be after dark and uh, the mothers were crying for their babies and the babies were crying for their mothers and that shepherd could find the mates to each and every one of them in the dark with all of them crying at the same time so it is amazing just how much uh, that uh, God uh, knows about us. It's just amazing as the good shepherd, it says that we know his voice. Now, how can you be led of a shepherd if you don't know his voice? That happens when uh, the Lord uh, saves a soul. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, Galatians 5.18, but if ye be not led, but if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. That, that, that clearly makes the statement. I think both of these verses clearly make the statement. If you are led of the Spirit of God, you are a saved person. Now, it says that uh, you receive not the spirit of bondage again to fear. Now, Philippians 2.15, it says that you are blameless, harmless, without rebuke. Now, we've talked about this week, peace has been mentioned over and over and over again. And that is the, the theme 
for everyone that has ever been saved. That is the one constant theme of everyone's conversion uh, and their experience is peace in their heart. Now, there, there's another side to that. It's not just peace that we know that we are children of God, that we know that something has happened to us and that we've gone from being drawn to him to being led by him. And that happens uh, when the Lord saves our soul. Now, if you recall, if you're holding on to something, uh, an experience in your life concerning uh, uh, something that happened to you with the Lord, and I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I want you to know that you know that you know that you've been saved by God's grace, and, and I can't ex uh, express that enough, how important that is in your own life, that you know that you've passed from death unto life, but Jesus Christ, uh, through his Spirit, is able to uh, let you uh, know that, that you can rest at night, that you can have peace, you can look forward to coming to church, or you can have a relationship with God that he wants you to have. Now, the two things I, I see here uh, that is the crowning uh, evidence of salvation is peace. And then what was happening to me Prior. That thing that I just could not get away from, that condemnation that I talked about, that trouble uh, in my heart, I couldn't get away from it. And I remember the day that I was saved or the night that I was saved and the day that I was dealing with that, it was just so uh, over uh, over the top trouble with me. And, and I was in the basement and I, I was trying to play and, and, and then I began to pray and I, I was just in, in just all sorts of shape. But the very moment that I was drawn into him and I became one of his children, the very second I felt peace, but also all of that other stuff was gone. And I mentioned through this meeting that I had asked my father when, when I went out and I hadn't told anyone that uh, I, just, I just got up and it was real late at night and there were just a few there around when, uh, when, when I got up and they were just waiting upon me to get up. They probably thought I may, may have been asleep. You wonder sometimes a, a child laying there and I have seen them go to sleep, you know, after they had been seeking the Lord and just lay there long enough. And they probably wondered that about me. I was just, it was just quite peaceable and... And that's when the Lord spoke peace to my heart. He's like, okay, what, what just happened to me? What just happened to me? It, it, to me, it wasn't just, just wow. To me, it was wow. And I, I felt differently than I had felt prior that day and the, the days going up to that. I felt the peace. But that's all I felt. I, I'd seen my granddaddy shout and I'd seen him just shout all over the house and I, and I, I thought that's what would happen. I was expecting something else, and, and I've heard that from many others as well, expecting something else than what we got. I'm not minimizing what I got, but it was my expectation that got in the, pro got in the way of me immediately accepting what the Lord had just done for me. But not just the peace. The trouble was gone. It was completely gone. I wasn't worried. I wasn't concerned. I felt light. I, I felt happy. And all of those things were coming from not just 
the peace that I was feeling, but all of that condemnation and all of that trouble was just so far from me, just like it was just miles away. I didn't tell anyone that night. I, I did uh, want to check it out when I lay down on my bed that wanted to see because I had trouble sleeping at night. And, and I knew that was a sure sign that something had happened to me because I lay down on my pillow and I, I laid down real... I thought, okay, what am I going to feel like when I try to go to sleep? I still felt the same thing. I felt the peace, but I didn't have the trouble there anymore. That's what's what you need to uh, seek out those things in your own heart. Trouble was gone. And I, I sat back up and, and no one knew. And I just sat there in my, in my bed and I laughed. I just laughed and I laughed. It was the funniest thing. Okay, then I went the next day for the day service. We had services day and night. I thought, okay, I haven't told anyone else. I'm still testing this thing out here. I wanted to be sure, and that's what you need to be. You need to be sure. But when you are sure and you know it, you need to go with it. You need to trust the Lord. You need to follow him by his spirit wherever he leads you. That's what you need to do. And the two nights prior and the day prior that I went to the altar, I, I, was, just, I was just all to pieces. I was just in all sorts of trouble. Didn't know what to do. I was just all wrought up. Well, I went to the altar that next day. I, I tried to cry. Have you ever tried to cry and couldn't? I couldn't think of a thing in the world to cry about. I couldn't have shed a tear if my life had depended on it. You know where it says when you get to heaven that, that God will wipe away all your tears? That day, he did for me. The trouble wasn't there anymore. I was thankful for the peace, but I was so glad that trouble was gone. Now, it is, it is as a shepherd leading his sheep. If ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, the fear is gone, the trouble is gone, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby ye cry, Abba, or Daddy Father. Now, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, okay, what now? What now? Well, the scriptures are very clear what happens or is supposed to happen next. It says on the day of Pentecost that those that gladly received his word were baptized. They had peace in their heart. They had been saved by God's grace. Their trouble was gone. And God commanded all men to be baptized. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is what he told his disciples to do. Go make disciples of men. Uh, teach them to observe uh, or make disciples of them, baptize them, and then teach them to observe all things. That is the order of things. And what did they ask Peter on the day of Pentecost? Peter, what must we do? Believe on the Lord and be baptized. And you say, well, that's part of salvation. No, that, they asked what they needed to do. Not how to obtain salvation, but the full process. And I believe and I know that the Spirit of God will lead someone to unite with the church and to be baptized. I believe that he can, uh, and he does. I have experienced that. 
I have heard that from others. Uh, immediately when the Lord saves their soul, uh, the first opportunity most of the time that they get, if they're at the church where the Lord wants them, that they will feel the Spirit of God leading them to follow him in baptism. Now, we find on uh, the house of Cornelius, he was a Gentile. Uh, God uh, sent Peter to preach to him and his house. And Peter says, what preventeth these from being baptized who have received the, the, the Spirit of God as we have. They were magnifying God. They had peace in their heart. They gladly received the word as well and they went and were baptized. Oh, what about the jailer? It is the first thing, the commandment of God of his children that he commands of them to do. After that, he has spoke peace to their heart. After that, he has saved them. Follow him in the water and be baptized, showing forth to the world outwardly what the Lord has done for you inwardly. Now, I've heard people say and, and say to the lost, what, what does the Lord want you to do? I think there's two things the, the Lord wants a lost person to do is repent of their sins and put your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Period. That's what he expects. Obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He doesn't lead him or her around to do anything else. It is not of works of man, but it is grace in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But conversely, just as soon as someone is saved by God's grace, they are one of his children. And his children are led by him as a shepherd leads his sheep in and out of the fold to find pastor and I can tell you with my own experience do you know why that I'm standing here this morning there's a few times that I've uh, while I've been trying to preach that I'd get up here and through my own fault no doubt that I felt nothing And do you know what I wanted to do when those times that that's happened? I would hope there would have been a trap door here standing or under me that I was standing on. And I would have gladly just pulled the lever and there I would have went out of your sight. Men try to preach the gospel and know nothing about the gospel. Men try to preach without the Spirit of God. May God help them. In many cases, may God save them first. I stand here before you this morning because I have been led into this. The Lord has let me know with no uncertain terms this was to be our life. This is what we had to do. Why do you think we went to Hawaii? Because God spoke peace to my heart and says, you all need to go to Hawaii to do mission work. And that's why we sold everything we had and put it everything but just a little crate and we flew off to Hawaii with, with our family of five. There's no way in the world I'd have done that unless I knew in my heart that God was leading me to do that. Now what you've got when you come to that conclusion and you understand that you've been saved by God's grace, you've got someone constantly directing you in your life. You are past the doubts and you're past the fears and you've got someone that you can pray to and have confidence in that you know that he's going to hear you, that he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. You don't have to worry about dying anymore because you know that when that day happens that you're going to be taken into heaven and in the presence of God itself. 
you, you, you've got a whole new world opens up to you if you can get past this that you are at, that you can know without any doubt at all where you stand with the Lord. I'm going to open the doors to the church. And like I said, I, I'm not trying to convince anyone. I'm not trying to coerce anyone into joining the church and being baptized. Never in a million years would I want someone to do something that they ought not to do, especially this. But I want you to search your heart. I want you to search your heart. Search it that you have a time and a place where the Lord has spoke peace to your heart where not only the peace came in, but the trouble left. People say that salvation is at the end of a prayer. Well, it wasn't immediately at the end of my prayer. I'll say that right now with all confidence. I had prayed for days and I was praying that night. But when the Lord saved me, I had stopped praying at least with the mind. And I was laying there and I just give up. Can't do it anymore. I surrender. I surrender. And when I surrendered, that's when I felt the peace. You say, well, I didn't see visions and I didn't see lights. That's possible, altogether possible. I don't discount anyone that says those things. I believe God is able to manifest himself uh, uh, to all people in any way that he wants to. But the one thing that I'm holding on to is peace and the trouble being gone. And when I followed him in that, when I followed him in obedience to unite with the church and to be baptized, and he, took, he, he alleviated those fears and those things away from me. And I'm one of his children. Please, please, just follow the Lord. That's all I ask you to do today.